With Zekers releasing the beta of version 50, a lot of questions have sprouted up that keep getting asked every stream I seem to go to, so I thought I'd come here and I'd make this video answering as many of those questions as I can. I plan to go through all the new content, behaviors I've observed this far, metas and strategies revolving new content, and my personal opinions on the matter. But I do want to emphasize before I continue any further that this is a beta of version 50. Nothing is final. So this video is made with the assumption that what we are experiencing in the beta will have no changes in the final release. But chances are we will get a lot of changes to all these bugs and all these values by the time B50 comes out. With that being said, we'll start with one of the two new enemies, the butler. The butler, who my community has named Nigel, has a very simple behavior and is definitely a unique addition. He walks around and ambience plays when you observe him nearby. He appears to sweep the floor and wander until he decides to put his broom away and attack. Here are the actual behaviors. He is a passive enemy when you are grouped with other players. At least one. If you are alone or solo, this is when Nigel becomes dangerous. He has three stages of behavior, sweeping, preparing, and attacking. In his sweeping phase, Nigel harmlessly walks around and blocks you with his fat body. He infinitely remains in this sweeping phase if you are grouped with at least one other person. If you are not grouped with another person, Nigel will eventually put his broom away and start preparing. In this preparing phase, Nigel holds nothing in his hands conspicuously. This is when you should consider getting the hell away from him, as he will soon attack you. In his attacking phase, Nigel pulls out a knife and runs after you at an impressively high speed for his size. Nigel will repeatedly stab you, dealing 10 damage each hit. If you manage to regroup with another player during this phase, Nigel will return to sweeping and act as if nothing ever happened. Though the knife in Nigel's pocket does look pretty juicy, so say you want to take it. Well, after taking 1 hit in solo and 5 hits in multiplayer, Nigel will explode and knock you back, also dealing damage. He drops not only his knife, but a horde of invincible angry hornets. These hornets cannot be stunned, trapped, or killed. They are insanely dangerous due to how fast they move. Wait to kill Nigel till the end of the day. It should be noted that as of right now, Nigel will attack you back if he's provoked in a group, but he will not chase you down. This is probably a bug. But you can use this to kill Nigel without being stabbed by simply backing up after hitting him as long as you have another player next to you. With Nigel, the butler, out of the way, let's move on to his weapon, the knife. The knife is an insanely versatile tool, very useful for killing enemies swiftly. However, the short range is a trade-off you definitely should consider. The knife animation has no cooldown, so you can left click as fast as you want and it will hit the knife every time you left click but the damage that you deal does have a cooldown. The exact DPS is something like 1 damage per 0.4 seconds, but don't quote me on that. I'll display some further uses of this knife in a moment, such as on giants. Giants are now killable. They take 24 hits of a shovel to kill over and die, but their behavior has not been adjusted at all. Shotguns seem to be ineffective, which is definitely a bug, um, as the same thing happens to dogs. And despite taking so many hits, the giants can be killed solo just by using the knife. If you grab yourself a few stun grenades and your best clicking skills, you can do this. You can, if you spam it, you can kill it in two cycles. You only need two. Yep, it's pretty useful. It should still be considered though that exterior power can respawn on maps. So if you kill a giant on a map with high giant spawn rate, chances are you'll just get another giant. Bouncing to another enemy chains, we have the Nutcracker. Nutcrackers are harder to kill with a shovel, as the good old crouch cheese has been patched out. Nutcrackers can aim downwards, but not upwards, with their shotguns. This combined with their ability to strafe after shooting you for a bit makes shoveling the nutcrackers an extremely daunting task. So how do we deal with nutcrackers? Well, the good old knife is coming back into play here. You can kill a nutcracker before it even fires if you time it right. Or you can take it on safely between reloads by just running at it and spamming left click. Let me see. Please punt me. 
Something else that should be noted about Nutcrackers is that their shotguns are valued at zero at the moment. It's unsolved whether or not this is a bug or intentional, but either way, they are meant to be used purely as a tool at this moment, which is very difficult considering the hit registration of shotguns is so busted right now. Hopefully this isn't finalized in V50, as shotgun stacking was a definitely a good source of money. Okay, now onto another piece of new content. We have enemy two of two, the old bird. These big crybabies, and I mean that literally. They will stand dormant at the beginning of a day and awaken as the day progresses, or after the apparatus is pulled. They are extremely lethal and are entirely designed to be avoided and snuck around. They appear to have the following behavior states. Dormant, awake, patrolling, and aggro. During the dormant state, the robot stands inactive outside. Touching it will do nothing. They are completely harmless. During the awake state, the robot springs into life at a random point past 1 p.m. It will then begin patrolling, and during its patrolling phase, these crybabies will look around for enemies to aggro onto. All and any entities, except for maybe bees, seem to count as an enemy to the old bird. They will then aggro, you'll see their headlamp turn on, indicating that they have spotted an enemy and are going to aggro onto it, and they'll send a hellish blizzard their way. In their aggro state, the old birds will chase after an enemy and will utilize various different weapons of war to take it down. It can do any of the following, fire rockets at you, boost towards you, boost upwards and land on you, stomp on you, or grab you, and burn you alive. What? Hello? What? <laughs> this grab is only interruptible by a teleport, as the old bird is not stunnable or killable by any means other than the worm. So it seems that they're intended to be a replacement for old giants. Avoiding their line of sight at all costs to make sure you don't get railed by their weapons is kind of the only way to deal with them. Here is the enemy description on screen right now. If you would like to read it, you can just pause the video. There is a bit of discovered counterplay to these enemies, which I will get into next when we talk about the new planets. Now with the new planets, we have been gifted three new planets, which drastically changed the way the game is played. For planet number one, we have Adamance. This planet is completely free, it costs no money to get onto, and at the moment it grants an extremely high average amount of loot on the interior. On screen right now, you can see just a bit of what the exterior looks like. There's a bridge drump on the left that leads to fire, but it's best to bring a ladder to cross since the remnants can collapse very easily and will cause you to plummet to your death. The main path is very windy, and on that path you will find a house. Inside this house, there's actually a bit of text that gives us a little hint on our next secret planet. If you type art into the terminal, you'll find yourself traveling to 68 artifice at a small price of 1500 credits. Now don't worry, the loot this map promises is definitely worth the cost. When Zeekers mentioned the endgame was going to change drastically, this is what they meant. On the planet artifice, you'll find many old birds outside and four warehouses that have nothing of value inside. These warehouse doors can actually be closed by pulling a lever on the right when you enter. The doors cannot be broken or reopened by anything other than players, so this is actually very good for trapping large enemies. Now to the interior. This map has prominently a mansion tile set, but can experience the factory maybe 10% of the seeds. There's an extremely high amount of loot on the inside, often hovering around 2,000 credit average just laying around. Cash registers and gold bars are decently common, and the majority of your troubles will come from the crybabies outside, rather than the enemies that spawn inside. There are many ways to use the buildings as cover from the old birds, and there is a hole in the fence on the right side that provides a back exit or entrance to both fire and main. Again, I'll elaborate on the strategies and metas later, as the info right now is just general stuff. Now onto the third and last new moon, Embryon. Um, you will find that this planet is uh, not worth it. You read about this planet in the description of Old Birds, however, the 150 credits you spend is definitely a scam. This is entirely a meme planet made to test Old Birds. Ow, oh, I'm crit. No, no, let me in. The interior often holds loot comparable to experimentation, and danger levels are 15 times higher. So it's a decently fun location to go if you're just about to end your run, you want to go off with a bang or something. But besides that, this planet is hell. Okay, 
I've gotten both new enemies and all three planets out of the way, so let's talk a few other changes and additions. First and foremost, Dine has gotten a rework. All of outside of the map is completely different, it has its ups and downs though. Positively, you can get a lot of hills to hide behind from giants and other enemies that rely on line of sight. Negatively, the valleys limit which ways you can move around enemies, making it very possible that the direction you have to travel is completely blocked off. The fire exit was moved, making it accessible without a ladder. It was accessible without a ladder in V49 by doing this skill jump. However, this type of movement has been completely replaced with this next change, the physics system. As you may have noticed by a few of the clips, you get sent flying pretty often by the old birds. This is caused by the new physics system that is intended to be more realistic. No more doing the Skyrim up a hillside. You will now slide down hills, oftentimes resulting in death. Oh! Oh! Your momentum also applies differently on slopes, making it so where you gain speed going down slopes and lose speed going up. The main thing you will have to consider with this change is that the normal path to fire escape on rent is not that safe anymore. There is a bug right now though, that if you jump off of any height, you will not take damage. Only if you fall off of the height will you take damage. However, this is without a doubt going to be patched in V50, so I didn't even want to bother covering it. We've got a few other minor additions here. We have an egg for Easter. You can throw this thing around over and over, and there's a chance it will explode and deal a large chunk of damage and knockback. It's a pretty decent weapon if you can actually get lucky, but for the most part, it hinders you when you accidentally blow yourself up when you deposit loot. We also have a new kawaii little suit, the bee suit. This, as implied by the name, is a bee as a suit. You can buy this for 110 credits, which is honestly a steal for how cool it is. There was also a bunny suit that was meant to be added, but it is currently bugged and you cannot purchase it from within the store. Back to our changes, we have crouch sprinting being removed. This honestly hurts me a little, as it was something I always used to get around dogs. It was never intentional though, so I get why it's gone, but there were definitely a lot more important fixes that I feel Zekers could have prioritized over this. Crouch sprinting is still technically possible, while it is a lot slower. Here's a clip demonstrating the new crouch sprint. You, you have to do the same, but press control and then press shift and let go of both. And press them again. Okay, right, listing some more changes. Assurance can be foggy now and dine can be rainy. Shovels are back to 16 pounds for some reason. Lamps block less of your vision, which is pretty nice, and whoopee cushions are actually worth something. Jesters will begin winding sooner, which means they got buffed for some reason. Baboon hawks will now only spawn in groups and their power has decreased. This means that baboon hawks can spawn in large amounts and will oftentimes just gang up on you. Ren received a nerf as the value of loot has gone down significantly. We hover around 900, at least from my experience, of loot that you find on the interior. Titan has received no buffs, meaning that this is definitely not a patch for running quota 10 or quota 6 speedrunners. Though there is a bug right now it appears that a lot of the interiors are smaller than they are intended to be. It is very easy to just run around the whole facility and clear it out pretty fast, which is without a doubt not intended. Now here are a few problematic things that remain in the game that personally I feel should have been prioritized over some of these changes. Number 1, we have the jetpack damage buffer. You'll still find yourself taking damage when you take off with the jetpack rather than upon landing. The jetpack also has the drain issue, where it will still drain when you are not holding it. Number two, the jester force field has not been fixed. Bullets still get blocked if a jester is within a 19 mile radius. Three, scan for items was not fixed. Whenever a shotgun is present outside of the ship, using the scan command on the terminal will not function whatsoever. It will just return scan for items. Four, giant behavior. Giants will obsess over the last player they saw, making it almost impossible for that person to go anywhere without being spotted over the entire map. Giant vision is still extremely far and broken. Number 5. No item cap changes. Item cap still is at 80, making vanilla runs lose items when restarting the lobby. It's been an issue for a while, and Zekers at one point updated it from 45 to 80, but it definitely wasn't enough. And number six, the instant worm. Being able to be instantly killed by a worm is bullshit, and most of the community agrees. There's an extremely long list of bugs that is being developed by Brent and other speedrunners, which I will link below. This is what I was referencing for most of the changes that should have been prioritized. Now, for other strategies, let's talk about dealing with new nutcrackers. 
Try and kill them while they're reloading using a knife. Here's a clip of that again. For dealing with new giants, you can either cheese them like this. A lot of hits. Yeah. Oh! Or you can use stun grenades and a knife. For dealing with the butler, just stay with at least one other person and wait to pop him till the day is over. You do not want to kill him early in the day. It is such an invalidation to a lot of areas in the map. For dealing with old birds, avoiding line of sight is really your only counterplay with the exception of artifice that has giant closable doors. On artifice, you have the ability to trap the big baby robots inside the warehouses which will take some time to master, but soon it will be your best way of dealing with the old birds. Aiming to get your two-handed items back to the ship as soon as possible will resolve any conflicts that you have when the old birds wake up later in the day. And that covers basically everything. Whoa, 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 okay. Um, so as I was finishing editing this video, a new patch came out for version 50 that changed up quite a bit of the game. First off, Adamant is no longer extremely overpowered. It will now grant an average of under 1,000 credits per day making it not worth for the amount of danger the map poses. Secondly, the Jester force field has been fixed completely. No more getting your bullets blocked from the other room over just because the Jester is winding. This is an insanely huge change, but it also doesn't excuse the buff to the Jester either way. For the third noticeable change, we have shotguns. Shotguns actually have value now. Not only that, but the ammo is worth something as well. Shotguns will always drop as a solid 45 credits from a nutcracker and the ammo will sell for 30 per shot. This means that every time you kill a nutcracker, you're essentially gaining 105 credits. This is absolutely insane as Rend is easily back in the meta. Rend having the highest spawn rates for nutcrackers will no longer have such low averages as the nutcrackers will carry the daily up amount by a long shot. By the way, a buckshot that is carried inside of the shotgun when it's sold will not increase the value of the gun. If you reload your gun before selling it, you are essentially wasting 30 credits. Avoid reloading your guns as much as possible and work with partially loaded weapons if you have to. Another patch is that the bunny suit actually works. You can buy this for 200 credits and although I don't have any footage of it, it looks sick. Trust me. Zeekers also added a disco ball to the shop. The disco ball will activate whenever the lights are turned off by any means. It plays music that will attract the dogs. This means that if your ship gets struck by lightning, you can say goodbye to silence. You would hate to get wiped by a disco ball, so please avoid buying it when doing actual serious runs. The weight of the shovel also got turned down from 16 pounds to 14 pounds, which isn't that noticeable of a change, but it helps with certain strats like beating the bracken with a shovel. And the knife went from 16 pounds to zero. The knife is now weightless. Okay, so I made a previous strategy for high quota running, but with the adamants and ren changes, it switched up drastically. Here is the best way to run high quota in this current V50 beta. You will run assurance for your first three days, just like usual. You will oversell quota one to not only get enough for rend, but also enough for a jetpack. The jetpack is a super vital tool for artifice later in the run. You will continue to sell 550 from that quota onwards until you're at a quota that is equal to or higher than 1500, granting you enough to send yourself to artifice without overselling. By then, you will have two or more jetpacks, depending on sales, and a bunch of gear that will help you actually get the high amounts of loot out of artifice. Essentially, quota 1 is assurance, quota 2 to 7 is rend, and quota 8 onwards will be artifice. You want to prioritize bringing back two-handed items early in the day on artifice since the old birds will present a threat after 1pm. With the shotgun stacking being buffed and artifice being an amazing late game map, you can bet that a new world record quota is on the way. There's a lot more I could include in this video, but I'm a little crunched on time, so if you have anything that's important that I missed, do let me know in the comments or in my Discord. Also, if you have any wonders about Dead by Daylight content, I am currently working on another video. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and please make sure to check out the wonderful people who have found a chunk of this info.